to attend the dhikr of Allah, to host this and arrange this gathering of dhikr, these kalamats that we will recite, the sitting and the anwarat and the nur and the light and mashallah, the thawab, the reward. There are no words to mention the thawab of this dhikr. So due to whom, due to whom we are sitting, the thawab will go to him, won't it? And today he is in desperate need of this reward. He doesn't need his children, he doesn't need his wife, he doesn't need money. He doesn't need kingdom, he doesn't need leadership, nor does he need any resource or material item of the world, which for us is so valuable. Everything is away from him. Today he's in desperate need in this first night of the grave, in the darkness of the grave. He's in desperate need of what? Subhanallah, what is he in need of? Hasbunallahu wa ni'am al-wakeel. The nur of this will go to him. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. The nur of this kalimat will reach him. And these ayat and verses will testify that Allah, maybe if he made any mistake during his life, due to some mistake or error, he committed sin, leave him, we have come to intercede for him. To intercede for him. Well, very few people get this great uh, reward. I've not seen this, that due to a man, alhamdulillah, one person, the program I've told you, the schedule is made. And thawab will, will, get, will reach him. And in such a moment, such an event, such a time, they would reach him. That all of the items of the world fail. I remember hadith, it's come to mind, if I communicate that to you, it would be good. That Ibn Sa'd, who narrated this hadith, and due to this nisbah, this hadith came to mind. As I said, that this program is made by Allah, this is not my schedule, not my agenda, not thing that I arrange. These are beautiful, unique hadith. And listen, my friends, with uh, attentiveness, because this is the time of ibrat. And learning, remember this, that not just one, tomorrow we will have to go as well. Every man is not that fortunate that Allah Ta'ala prepares this for him. Let's look inside our lives, inside ourselves, of what are the mu'amalat of our lives, what is our schedule, how are we living our lifestyle, we are ungrateful to Allah. We are uh, disobedient and we disobey Allah, there's disobedience and, and error in our lives. How can we be hopeful of goodness in the hereafter when we are rejecting Allah Ta'ala's orders here? With which strength are we today in this world disobeying Allah? This is something to think about. This gathering, this is not a gathering for tradition or to play games. If anyone has aqal here today, wisdom and understanding after today, then he should improve and change his life. Otherwise, summum bukumun, it's like a stone, a hard rock, totally like a rock. And nothing can then touch a rock or penetrate rock. Nobody's death can penetrate. No, but nothing in life, no nasiha can change that person. In that life, that person is, you can say, stuck. His shu'ur and his understanding and consciousness is lost. He's gone. And these are the waqiyat, the events that give life. These majalis, and by chance to get together, together. This is from Allah Ta'ala's, uh, this is from Allah Ta'ala, preparation for death. He has gone. He has gone to his maqam, to his station. But let's take the learning. Let's take the learning that he was with us yesterday. Where is he gone now? That we have ourselves lowered our friend into the soil and covered him with the soil. And today, we think that we will come back with a long lease of life with the guarantee that, oh, the time won't come for us. That we won't pass away. I have not come here to give you nasiha. Nor if I need to do this, I'll give you a speech or tell you uh, with a speech or lecture. No, Allah Ta'ala has gathered us together so we can remind each other. And I will pull us together. Not you, you are pious. I will pull myself together. I will pull myself to them, I'm giving the lesson to myself. You are pious people, alhamdulillah. You are pious. Don't think I'm telling you, I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at myself. Why me? I'm questioning myself that you are mashallah pious. That I will also go there. So I ask myself the question. That this is a warning. Ibrat. A big warning and a reminder from Allah. And the biggest, uh, uh, you can say, ungrateful person is that individual. Subhanallah. Who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him ni'mah, gives him a gift, a favor. Allah ta'ala gives him the ni'mah. Where we sat down, we say, where, what is this place? Tell me, what is this place? This is a khanqah. And what is a khanqah? Is it a political a place of politics? A political base? Or is it a business base? Or is it a bus station? Or a taxi station? Or is this a place to make money? No. This is the place where the Akhara is made thereafter, where the Akhara, Qabr, Hashar, everything is made. This is the headquarters of Dhikr. This is the headquarters of Dhikr. This is what we call the Khanka, the headquarters of Dhikr. This is not a place where we play games. 
This is not a place where Piri, Muridi, the Sheikh and the student game is played out. Kashf and visions and karamat and miracles are witnessed. Or where piety is witnessed. No, this is about the fikr and the concern and the worry and the caution for the grave. This is where we come to worry about the grave. That if we want to gather good deeds for our grave, we will have to gather them here from this headquarters, from this place. And when a person leaves this headquarters empty-handed, then there's just... If he leaves the Adda, then he goes into the Kadda. If he leaves the headquarters of the grave, concern for the grave, preparation for the grave, without nothing, then he has fallen into the ditch. Look here, totally here in Manchester, this moment in time. What a great headquarters Allah Ta'ala has given. From which, just like the maqam of the Qabr, his first station phase of the Qabr, that he is there now. And from this headquarters, and that he took a step out of here, and the first step is the grave. So this is the destination for the hereafter. And this is preparation for the hereafter. This is a hadith. That the first thing, the thing that will save a person most from the punishment of the grave is the dhikr of Allah. It's the dhikr of Allah. And then we, let's think for a moment. That the dhikr of Allah and the preparation for the dhikr of Allah, that you don't need to seek the dhikr of Allah. The fragrance of the dhikr of Allah is spread all over. Walking, talking, you see, khanqa, khanqa, khanqa. There's no place. This masjid, there was this masjid, there was this masjid. Now it's become khanqa, written khanqa. It's calling. Come, prepare for the grave. Come, prepare for the grave. Listen. What will be the hal of those people who commit sins? You think that if the leaf drops with nur, then the angel of death Israel, Israel says, Thou, you're successful. Now what's the next part of the story? Great part. Allah Ta'ala, for every insan, Allah is kareem and raheem. Allah Ta'ala says that everyone I love, everyone I love, I have ra- love, rahmah, the sinful person, everyone, whoever is iman in the heart, Allah Ta'ala loves that person. Subhanallah. Even if you have an atom's weight of iman, mustard seed weight of iman, even if you are a facet, evil to a chore, a thief and bandit, you still got 40 days to go. You've got a chance. From the time the leaves drop, you're insan, you drink zina. If you drink alcohol, you're insan. If you're stealing, you're insan. You're a human being still. If you run with a woman away from home and do zina, you're still an insan, human being. If you commit fornication, adultery, this in your fitra, sin, you sin. But the kamal is this, when you are sinning, at the same time after sinning, after sinning, you have created an awareness that I've committed this sin. And after you commit that awareness and you have that awareness, that awareness is created, then 40... 40 years maybe you did zina, you did adultery, or you drank alcohol, or you committed evil. 40 years, after 40 years, if you say, Allah, forgive me, Allah says, all of your sins are forgiven. Not one, all your sins are forgiven. If you do tawbah after those 40 years, Allah says, I'm ghafoor. You've asked me for forgiveness. Allah says, I'm not a police officer or a judge in a court. I say no to you or reject you. No, you have said it and I've done it, Allah Ta'ala says. I've done it. Allah, my sins, what sins? Allah says, beware if you ever think after tawbah that you have committed sins. Beware. Beware that you can never think in your mind that you've committed sins. Don't even imagine that you committed sins. Shaitan will bring sins in front of you, laugh at him. Say, no, 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 don't try to deceive me. Because Allah has promised me forgiveness after my repentance. Jannah, paradise, how easy Allah has made it. So these 40 days Allah has given to me and you after the leaf of death drops, Allah gives for preparation for death. 40 days are left, prepare. Now what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us great darajat of muhabbat. Allah says, your destiny, I will give you high status in the akhirah. I want to give you high status. I want to raise you with Abdal, with the Qutbs, with Rabia Basri, rahimahullah. I want you to rise with the good pious people. So in these 40 days, when your leaf of death drops from the tree, Allah says that I'll give you a chance before angel death comes to you. It's difficult, isn't it? Now Allah says the shaitan makes it hard for you. He doesn't want you to come to Ustoba. So Allah sends a mercy on the individuals who are going to die in 40 days. Allah sends His mercy. And beautiful Ramad Allah Ta'ala puts that person into difficulty. And we run from that difficulty. Allah says, I'll make you fall into an accident. You could have died in the accident. Maybe your hand broke or your neck broke or your leg broke. But you didn't die. Why? Subhanallah. Allah says, I want to give you a chance to come to me. Come to me. Do Tawbah. I want to forgive you. I want to forgive you. What the great status of Allah. We say, oh, accidents happen, oh, I'm ill, oh, I have to go to the hospital. Oh, be grateful for these accidents and these temporary obstacles. Because if you're an abid, if you're pious, then this happening with you? If this happening, people say, why is this happening? I'm pious, I'm good, I pray salah, I do this, I do this action, I have to do that action, I have to be pious. Why are there problems in my life? People say this, don't they? 
People complain. Why is it? I pray salah. As I said, praying jamaat. I go to congregation. The amount of salah I prayed. And so many problems I've got in my life. The more I pray, I've got cancer. I've got problems. Beware. Never complain to Allah. Don't complain to Allah. Oh, foolish people. Don't say this to Allah. Allah Ta'ala is everything in destiny. Embrace it and say, I enjoy this. I'm enjoying this. This for me is not a difficulty. This is not a jinn, not a ghost, no jadu. This is an alarm clock ringing to me that Allah has called me, come to me, come to me. Do you think a ghost and a jinn and shaitan is something to put us off? Is there magic in life? There's nothing. There's no force that can go against Allah. Allah Ta'ala says that whenever anything occurs, when problems go ups and downs, accidents, your cars had a knock or illness or cancer, whatever happens, don't consider that these are jarasim and problems. And well, consider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me a favor. He sent a difficulty or problem upon me. Allah Ta'ala loves me. He's given me a chance. I believe in Allah. I'm a sinful person. Okay, I've committed sins. I accept in Allah. If I'm a sinful person, now I've committed sin. Most definitely we are sinful. The actions we do then first and foremost, we need to look at that sin or that illness or that disease, whether it's at home or outside or at the shop. Thousands of different things. First and foremost, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I've come to you. Allah, forgive me. Allah, forgive me. Allah, forgive me. First thing to do. Allah says, ah, here's my servant, I have to forgive this person. Abid or Zahid, worship or Zahid, if he's an Abid, pious, praise Salah, and he's committing sins, Allah Ta'ala says that I really love you so much, you can't do those amal, the amount I love you, you don't do that many deeds. So I want you to open your eyes wide, I want to take you to that level of Jannah, and you're not doing those amal deeds. So Allah says, I make you ill and sick, and with every breath I give you elevation. With every breath of give elevation, these are hadith, great hadith, I can't tell you the details of these. That after illness, Allah Ta'ala gives great ni'amas and rewards and rank and heights. So now, what's the situation? Don't cry when someone's sick, oh his breath stop, he's ill, he's like, then have yaqeen with what I'm saying. That we are trembling due to the illness and he doesn't realize. He doesn't realize that person. I'll tell you the truth. Oh, look at him, he's so sick. Oh, Allah, Allah, ki hala, what's happened? He's the servant of Allah, subhanAllah. He's an abid, a zahid. If Allah Ta'ala has given him illness, he was praying salah, he was an abid, worshiper, saleh, pious, the illness, the problem has given to him, shaitani people. Oh, no, no, no. Look at his salah, look, he prayed salah, look at his hal now. He's downtrodden and disheveled and tired. People say that when you pray, you get good fortune. And look at him now, astaghfirullah. Oh, people, the servants of Allah, Allah Ta'ala has given him great rewards at this moment. Then in a few hours, he'll get... And and he couldn't even do the worship to get the rewards. Those rewards he's getting due to the illness. He didn't have the strength. He didn't have the energy. But his heart was beautiful. And he fulfilled the faraid, the compulsory actions. Allah Ta'ala liked his actions. So Allah Ta'ala wanted to put on the heights. Allah Ta'ala said he couldn't pray that much salah to get the rewards he had earned and deserved. Allah wanted to give him the qurb of the Imam Ulambiya, the nearness to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah wants to give him this word. So he became ill. After illness, like our friend, he became ill. He was very ill, our friend. And people are alarmed that what is I was happy, I was rejoiced that oh he's gonna get more struggle. More Allah Ta'ala wants to strike him, struggle. Allah take the struggle out of him because now he's enjoying that my Shaykh did the right dua. Subhanallah. Hi hi. He used to say to me, This is I mean the brother said, This is happening. I said, Let it happen, the illness. Let it occur. Keep him, let him struggle, let him struggle, give him the medicines. Why? Subhanallah. Because afia, ask Allah for afia. Yes, ask Allah for good health and ease and everything that's happening. Allah keep on doing it. But Allah don't give pain to my friend Allah. Ha ha. This is the dua. End of story. This is the dua to us. The Allah take him through the difficulty, knocking around, bumping around. We give him such an injection that he doesn't get the pain. From we were, his sister was struggling, his mother, his children, they were crying. Everyone was crying. But he, Allah, give him the struggle, give him the struggle, but at least he can remember you during that time, so you can give him reward after that, Allah, due to the sickness and the illness he's gone through. So think, everyone has different thinking. So I said, don't ask me to do dua, because these are the duas I do. I said, he's got a lot of pain, Allah, give him more pain. Give more difficulty. So that through the pain, don't come to me asking for duas with your pains and problems. No, don't come to me with these requests. Then, 